thank you to the organizers uh, and for their fantastic organization. I mean, this has been one of the most uh, fabulous meetings I've been to, and it's a privilege and honor to be here. Um, I'm Ani Purushottam. Since August last year, I was invited by the Tata Trust, uh, which is a major philanthropic uh, foundation in India, uh, to lead their um, cancer program. And what I intend to do in the next 11 and a half minutes uh, is to tell you, uh, give you an overview of what we're doing and how we are trying to transform cancer care for patients who are at the below poverty line. I'll start by telling you we're looking at 1.3 billion population. I'll also tell you that it is a country which is poorly served in terms of healthcare. Cancer care is no exception. There is an increasing burden of cancer in India. They're hit by the double burden of infectious disease and uh, now uh, non-communicable diseases, so there is something desperate that needs to be done in that country. What you see up here are hospitals in the state of Assam, uh, ranging from the uh, government medical colleges to the small primary healthcare centers in India. So what you have here in this, in this, in this uh, slide is the high cancer burden in India, which is increasing year on year. And I would argue that this is not the full story. This is an underestimate because cancer registries are not mature and not fully formed across India. And therefore, what we are likely to see in the next five to 10 years as the cancer registries get better is the real story. The second thing is there's an actual under diagnosis and and, of, and patients actually not reaching the healthcare system. It's something that uh, Max touched on yesterday, and I'll allude to a little bit on that. So the access to diagnostics and treatment can only happen when the patient gets to the point of care. And at the moment, we find a number of patients are not getting there for many reasons. As a consequence of this, patients are diagnosed late, so there's, a, there's lack of awareness, health promotion is poor, the risks of cancer, the, the risk agents that cause cancer are high in certain parts of the country. Eventually, when patients do get a symptom and they do reach a doctor, the doctor doesn't always know what to do. So there are multiple touch points, and by the time they get to care, it's late. 70% of patients in India present with a late diagnosis. The physicians in the room will know there is very little you can actually do in terms of cure. The consequence of this is illustrated on the right-hand side of this slide. Patients, poor patients, do not have enough money to undergo their treatment. There's failure of compliance of treatment when they start. They have to travel thousands of kilometers to get to a decent center that can treat them. And they don't always finish their treatment. As a result, they die. So what you hear, see here on the survival figures are four tumor types and the reality of today's problem in India in terms of uh, cancer survival. As a result of this, the Tata Trust, the philanthropic organization, decided they would use their money wisely in India in cancer care uh, for the foreseeable, foreseeable future. So they've invested a huge amount to develop the infrastructure for cancer care in India. We decided we'd focus, and, and the model is going to be different, not the standalone cancer center model uh, that you see in the Tata Memorial Hospital, which is an amazing organization, but a distributed model of care. When I was asked to get involved in this, we went to Assam. For those of you who've been to Assam, you'll know it's a beautiful state in the northeast of India, but it's really deprived. Deprived in terms of economy, deprived in terms of healthcare, uh, and there are real challenges in terms of the incidence of cancer. So you get some fairly interesting uh, epidemiological data here, like in Mizoram, where you have a very, very high incidence of cancer. And these patients, uh, something like 80 to 90% of the patients leave the state for healthcare. This is the other challenge in Assam. The terrain is poor, rains heavily, floods, patients can't get to a hospital. When they get to a hospital, they can't leave. Families can't get to it. So after multiple challenging discussions, we decided that we would use Assam as our model. Because if you can do it in Assam, you can do it anywhere in India. And I would argue it could be a good model for the rest of the world as well. So why don't, if we're going to take on a big challenge, why don't we do it properly? So this is our model in a nutshell in, in one slide. So um, Sharon alluded to palliative care. In India, patients can't get access to opioids. 
because the drug controllers in India actually don't know the law in the States. So our role, so we're looking initially at two ends of the spectrum, which is what do we need to do about patients with late stage disease now, today's problem, which is make sure palliative care is good, and the second is how can we shift the stage of diagnosis from late stage diagnosis, 70% presenting late to early stage, and how do we then get these patients to understand what their symptoms might be, try and minimize their risk factors, get them to get to a hospital, and then get the physicians to treat them, and then we start the access to diagnostics and treatment. So we have a huge program which we've started on awareness, prevention, early detection. We've launched the screening program in Assam. In Assam, they launched the screening program, the government launched the screening program, uh, and out of, th this is a public health screening program for breast, cervical, and oral. We did a survey on 1,400 of the population who were eligible for screening, only 0.2% of them accessed screening, because they didn't know what to do. That is the reality of the situation. The second thing is infrastructure and human resource development because there are not enough trained people to actually deliver the care. So are there different models of care that we can use? So skill up people, as we've done in my institution in London, to actually deliver the care with very clear skills. Technology, India is great at technology, but we don't use it adequately. Even in the West, I would argue, we don't use technology. So we are partnering with Tata Consultancy Service to do this follow international clinical guidelines as well as local guidelines that are relevant to the population in India, and finally, pricing. And this talk, I'm going to touch mainly about pricing for the purposes of discussion. Now, this is the model we created. Assam has a population of 34 million. They have three cancer hospitals in the state. Two are in the capital, and one is in the south of Assam. So it's, it's like a crocodile. The state is like a crocodile this way. And, and with, with the river that runs across the north of Assam, patients can't gain access. So the question was, what can we do? So we decided on a di distributed model of care. These concentric circles will tell you the level one centers are the apex centers, which do pretty much everything. Around them, distributed through the state, are the level two centers, which are the new greenfield centers that we're going to build on government medical college sites to work in partnership with the government medical college. Beyond that, you have a peripheral ring of district hospitals, and we're putting up um, diagnostic centers, and, and low-complex treatment will be delivered there as well, as well as follow-up. Uh, then, and these will be connected through a digital network, all of them virtually, it'll be paperless. Uh, as far as the existing hospitals, that might be a challenge, but the new ones, that won't be. And this is what it's going to look like. So what we have at the moment uh, are two hospitals in the capital, in black, one in the south, and all the others are the new, new, new developments that are coming up. These, in fact, are being launched on Monday. Uh, that's how fast the pace of this program is. It's a partnership between the government of Assam and the Tata Trust. The government is putting in 60% of the money, the Tata Trust is putting in 40% of the money for the infrastructure, uh, and the groundbreaking ceremony for the 17 centers is happening on, As uh, on Monday in Assam. Um, and it's being streamed live on Facebook, so you should be able to watch it. So the level three centers, the green centers, are the diagnostic centers. So if you're a patient Anywhere, instead of now giving up hope and having to travel to Tata, uh, Tata Memorial in Mumbai, you actually can, within three hours, get to a center for your diagnosis. So if you have a symptom, what you actually do, because these are digital, digitally connected and there's a central command center, you actually, this is the central command center in Gohati, in the capital of Assam you actually have, are given a toll-free number. You'll be connected to the center, manned by MBBS doctors and nurses who will talk to you about your symptoms and then advise you as to where you can go. They will book an appointment for you in your nearest center. You will then get there, and based on your diagnostics, you will have your diagnostics. You can't get radiologists to get to the periphery of Assam. We will be using teleradiology for your images to beam back to anywhere in India. A report comes back within 24 hours, and that initiates your care. So within the plan, the challenge is within 72 hours, you will get to a hospital if you have a diagnosis of cancer to start your further investigations and your treatment. We will also use this, this, this digital technology for virtual tumor boards, uh, for training, for telepathology where we can, that's a bit of a challenge, uh, and, and uh, telemedicine. Now, there are other things that we need to do, and I'm going to start with the right-hand side of the slide. You, you, we talk a lot about drugs in these meetings, but let me tell you, devices are also extremely expensive. Um, and we have been very 
clear that we are, we are opening, by the way, we are opening 200, we beat the Tata Trust, opening 200 to 300 facilities across India. Assam is the prototype. We've launched in six other states. Uh, the state governments are desperately keen to partner with us. Um, so partnership with vendors. We've just gone into an agreement with GE, where GE will equip all our centers with imaging equipment, which we do not buy. We lease from them, we pay them an interest on the lease, and they will work with us as partners. So we are now not looking at partners, at, at industry as vendors, we're looking at industry as partners. So that's the conversation that we've started to have with them. We're now talking to other vendors in the lin linear accelerator space, and we expect to come up with a similar um, uh, agreement with them. This bit is good news because insurance hasn't been in, has been a real problem in India. Uh, the state government of Assam has a reasonably good insurance, but the central government have just announced a national insurance program which will be rolled out to the majority of the population uh, pretty, pretty soon. Uh, and, and what we need to do is try and get um, penetration here. We've set up a price discovery cell, and some of the data I'm going to show you now is confidential. It has been shared with me by my, my dear colleagues in India who are directors of other cancer centers, not the ones that we are building, uh, but, but uh, they are, they're, they're, they're interesting to look at. This is very simply a slide to talk about the Ayushman Bharat program that the Prime Minister of India has launched in terms of getting universal health care coverage in India, which has been a real dream, but is soon to become a, a, a reality. Now, this is what I want to show you. This is data on four hospitals, four drugs and prices between hospitals and within the hospital. And it's worthwhile just look, taking, taking 30 seconds to look at this. You have the prices sitting up here. Within the same hospital, you have a difference in price, and that's because of generics, largely because of generics, partly because procurement is strange in some hospitals. And the other thing is across hospitals in red, you can see quite a significant difference in price. This is hot off the press. We now need to try and understand what the problem is. Uh, we don't fully understand what the problem is. These are all public sector hospitals and charity hospitals, so these are, this is not the private sector. The law in India says you cannot procure in bulk if you have different providers, but what was not known before was that you can negotiate as partners. In other words, 20 hospitals can get together and negotiate with industry, but to procure, to buy, you have to buy individually. And when we dig down a little bit into the data, I did, we didn't have time to do this before I came here, is it's really interesting. Taking one drug, trastuzumab, as, in, as an example, if we were able to buy trastuzumab at the price that is the cheapest, the quality is right, that's what you will get a 61.2% decrease in the price of the drug in the same country and often in the same state, and sometimes hospitals that are not too far away. This is linked, it appears, to volume. So if you buy more, your price will come down. And on this scale here, you find that multiple price points exist across the same hospital because you've also got the retail price, which patients, in India, patients have to pay for their drugs. They go out to the pharmacy, they buy the drugs, bring them into the hospital. It might be a completely different price for the below poverty line who are getting the drug within the hospital at the rates that the hospital has negotiated uh, with, 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 the, with, the, uh, provide, with, with the with the industry. So, this is an area that we are tackling because we think Bringing down the, the cost of care is central to delivery of good care. And how are we doing this? We share information. Hospitals are now going to share information widely. We have a national cancer grid of 134 cancer hospitals in India that is run by my dear friend and colleague, Dr. Pramesh, who is based at the Tata Memorial Hospital. We are now discussing extensively how we can share that data. We are allowed legally to negotiate together, but we're not allowed legally to purchase together. As the Tata Trust hospitals, our 200 hospitals can purchase in bulk. That's not a problem. We are looking very clearly, and we've, we've got on board CHAI, Clinton Health Advisory uh, uh, Access Initiative. They've done some amazing work in Africa, and they're working with us because we looked at what they did with six countries in sub-Saharan Africa, and they, that resulted in a reduction in the cost of drugs in Africa. And where we can, we're going to contract 
jointly, and we've taken on board uh, colleagues who can partner with us. We're doing the same with equipment. We are negotiating together, but we'll procure independently. These machines cost a huge amount of money, so it's not just about drugs, it's about, about um, industry partners in the devices space as well. So the net result of that, this is what we're aiming for, a huge ambition of shifting the stage of diagnosis from 70% currently, late diagnosis, late stage diagnosis from 70%, bring it down to 30%. We've set a target of 10 years. I don't know if we'll do that, but we're certainly going to try. If we get halfway there, I can tell you we would have made a huge impact on the population in India. The second is accessibility and patients recognizing when to access. Reduction in, 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 in tobacco use, for example, which is huge in India, particularly smokeless tobacco, um, to, to reduce the ill effects for the next generation. Reduce out-of-pocket expenses, so patients actually don't have to suffer for generations as a result of having to spend on cancer care. And finally, I think this is really important, time hasn't allowed me to go into this, but we're basically taking BSc graduates in mathematics and training them how to deliver healthcare uh, with the help of doctors and nurses. Thank you very much. Thank you, Arnie. Any comments, questions from the audience? Yes, please, Kelechi. Hi, my name is Dr. Kelechi, I'm Nigeria, and I'm really glad that you talked about Assam because UICC is paying for me to go to Assam to study the Kacher Cancer Hospital, and I'll be there in August. So my question is, what's, uh, well, the reason I'm going there is actually to learn what they are doing so we, can, so we can translate that to our project in Nigeria. And my question for you is, what should, I, what should be the most a prominent thing on my mind going to Assam in August regarding cancer and patient care. Well, in addition to that, you're going specifically to Kachar Cancer Hospital, which is run by a dear friend of mine called Dr. Ravi Kanan. I know him. Yeah, that's, I just so, tested him. <laughs> so he went to that hospital because it had nothing. And he worked in Tamil Nadu in the southeast of India. And he has transformed that hospital. I actually haven't visited. I'm due a visit. Uh, but he has done something phenomenal which is being able to deliver high quality care. He's a surgeon, uh, and he's done a lot of the stuff that we're planning to do, which is the upskilling of no, non-healthcare professionally trained people to get them. He has his, his attendants, what, uh, his uh, uh, operating attendants, open and close the abdomen, for instance, because he can't get enough people there. There's a staffing issue. But as long as you can skill up people to deliver that level of care in a safe environment with adequate supervision, you can start thinking outside the box. And he's somebody who's really started to do this. He's absolutely passionate. He's, his hospital is run by a foundation. Uh, and we are talking to him about working much more closely with him. And hopefully, in the future, he'll be part of our, uh, our, our hospital, 200 Hospitals Plus uh, endeavor. Arnie, I was actually curious about how you turn mathematic graduates into healthcare personnel. So we have what developed, the so the Assam government have given us permission to do this. Um, so what we have done is with King's College London, which is my uh, university, we have put together a bespoke program of training, uh, which defines very clearly what you as an individual can and cannot do. So if you want to be a nurse assi assistant or a doctor's assistant, Assistant, these will be your ultimate roles and responsibilities. We have defined a bespoke program that says to do that, you need to train to do this for the next year. We've given it to the Assam uh, University for approval. It's not yet approved. Once they approve it, we'll start the program. But why mathematics graduates? Why not? I don't know. Um, so, so, I don't know. It's so, not the first so, thing that comes up so to my it, mind. So mathematics is not the only field. It's physics, chemistry, mathematics, biology. I use oh. mathematics as the extreme example that you. So just to share with you. Um, my hospital in Guy's Hospital, we've just opened our cancer center a year and a half ago, and we've got a satellite in Sidcup. You go to that satellite, we treat cancer patients. We've got 14 chemo chairs, a, a two Linux, and, and CT, etc. There is no doctor there. Entire care is delivered by healthcare professionals, some of them trained specifically to do certain skills. The receptionist at the entrance of that hospital will go in and do your CT scan for you. Super. Thank you so much, Ronnie. Um, so far, you will come back to stage.